Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric Meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name. You need to invite friends, loved ones and family members today. It's going to be a powerful time of studying the word of his grace. I know you're being built up every day as we spend time looking into the mirror, the perfect law of liberty. I have co-hosting with me this morning, my wife, Dr. Rachel Damina. Honey, good morning. Good morning, people of God. Welcome to this broadcast. Amen. Let's pray together today. Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The entrance of your word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. As we look into the perfect law of liberty, even your word today, I decree that the eyes of your people's understanding be flooded with light. We unlock their minds that the light of Christ shines in their understanding. Veils fall off. Shadows terminated. All practices totally taken off. The reality of this relationship written in our hearts by the Holy Spirit finds expression. Nobody lives after the end of this time of fellowship the same way they came. We give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're still looking at understanding the old and new covenants in Christ. Understanding the old and new covenants in Christ. Now, if you paid attention, we've gone quite some distance. We established that the old covenant is not books and the new covenant is not books. The old covenant is a relationship with God that is predicated on what man is capable of doing, which never meets God's standard. While the new covenant is a relationship with God that is predicated on what Christ has done, which has met the requirement and the standard of God's expectation. Yes. That's the difference between the old and the new covenant. Now, if you paid attention carefully yesterday, we say the old covenant finds fault. The new covenant doesn't find fault. Mm. So the two covenants can't work hand in hand because one is a fault finder. The other one does not find fault because the faults that the old covenant found were punished on Christ. And based on Christ's work, the new covenant has been made available to the believer. Lord. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Read for us. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. What do you mean by the holiest in verse 19 above? We must learn to read the Bible. Not in verses, but in paragraphs. <laughs> verse 19 above will only be understood by reading what the same writer had already explained in an earlier paragraph. Hebrews 9, 22 and 23. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. So the heavens were made for man. The heavens were made for man. Yes, you heard me. Mm. The heavens were made for man. It's true. God existed before the heavens were created. Otherwise, because it's God who created it. the heavens and the earth. Mm. So if he created the heavens and the earth, he couldn't have been in the heaven mm. to create the heaven. Well, that would mean that the heavens were created for man. Wonderful. Everything God created was for man. And man was created, created for, for God. God. Like nobody brings a baby into the world without provision. Mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. in a normal sane environment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you prepare for the COVID. God created man. He prepared the atmosphere for man. Right. Mm. Prepare the heavens and the earth and for man. Earth, yes. Man will live in the earth and in heaven. And Glory. God will live in man. Glory. See that. Hallelujah. Man will live in the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. But God will Glory. live in man. So, so man is God's, God's heaven. Yes. Man is God's house. Mm. Man is God's dwelling place. Right. Man is God's residence. Yes. And I'm not man, talking about man. I'm talking about the born-again born again believer. Mm. All right? Now, Hebrews 9.24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So the question now will be, where did Jesus shed his blood? He shed his blood in heaven. Now, follow carefully. We're dealing with boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood, blood of, of Jesus. Jesus. 
And we are tracing how this became a reality. All right? So, where was the new covenant established? In heaven. In heaven. It was between God and his son, not between God and you. Mm -hmm. And you are a beneficiary of that covenant. Mm -hmm. You and God don't have a covenant. People you don't. Of their covenant yeah, people say, God. I have a covenant with God. Yeah. Can you have a covenant with God? Can you, do you have what, what is a takes? covenant? Mm. A covenant is a pledge, a vow, an agreement between two or three parties to carry out terms. And when the terms are broken, there is punishment on the breaker of the terms. Mm. And once the terms are broken, the covenant no more holds. Mm -hmm. You and God can't have covenant. You are fallible. <laughs> God is infallible. You cannot have covenant. You will break it immediately. <laughs> immediately. You know, when Moses gave the children of Israel the laws mm -hmm. that they demanded for, mm -hmm. the laws and the Ten Commandments that they wanted, they broke. Moses himself, the lawgiver, okay. the Moses who gave the commandment, broke everything. <laughs> okay. So, man doesn't have the wherewithal to meet with God on covenant terms. Level, yes. Man doesn't have that. All right? Mm -hmm. So the covenant is between God and God. By two immutable things, it's impossible for God to lie. By God and God, God cannot lie. The pre-incarnate God and the incarnate God, that is God and Jesus. Jesus represents man in the covenant, while God represents deity. So the covenant is between God and God. You are just a beneficiary of that covenant. That's very clear. Galatians 3.16 now further explains. Yes. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So Christ is the seed of Abraham. See that? Christ is the seed of Abraham. So we must put Matthew 26, 28 in proper perspective. Mm -hmm. So read for us Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The blood was shed in heaven. Mm -hmm. The blood was not shed on earth. It was not shed in the garden of Gethsemane. Neither was the blood shed on the way to Golgotha. The new covenant is a covenant of the shed blood of Jesus in heaven. So we have the old covenant in the earth and the new covenant in heaven. Yeah. Hebrews 8, 10 to 12. Mm. And he read for us. But this is the covenant that we make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me. From the least to the greatest. But I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Verse 12 is an absolute statement. Yeah. Their, their sins, sins and, and their iniquities, iniquities will I, I remember, remember no, more. no more. But hold on a bit. Again, the blood was shed in heaven. Mm. The new covenant is a covenant of the shed blood of Jesus mm. in heaven. So we have the old covenant mm. in the earth. Mm. And the new covenant in heaven. That's critical. Mm. Old covenant in the earth. Hence, there will be need for animal sacrifice. Mm. Hence, there will be need for certain physical things brought to the tabernacle, yes, okay. a location somewhere, yeah. because it was in the earth. But the new covenant is in heaven. So the blood was shed in heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not like the physical animal sacrifice where the blood was sprinkled in the tabernacle on earth. Yes. Okay? And mm -hmm. even then, in the shadows, if you remember, when Israel brings the animal, yeah. it is killed. Then the high priest would take the take blood, the blood into and go the into holy. the Holy of Holies and sprinkle the blood. Mm. So it was the responsibility of the high priest mm. to sprinkle the blood. And the blood was not sprinkled where the animal was killed. It was sprinkled okay. in the Holy of Holies yes. by the high priest. That is a shadow, mm. which will mean that the blood of Jesus was not sprinkled where he died. Mm -mm. It it's was sprinkled when he rose. rose. Because it was when he rose, he became high priest. High priest. Then he took, took the blood. blood and offered the blood in heaven. Mm. Now, don't forget, mm. heaven and earth were made for man. Mm. 
Mm. Don't ever forget that. Now, honey, what you just read gave us an absolute statement yes. that their sins and their iniquities will yeah, I, remember I remember no mm. more. So look at verse 13, mm. Hebrews 8, 13. In that he said a new covenant, he had made the first old. Now that which decayed and waxed and waxed old is ready to vanish away. So the old covenant does not subsist with the new. Mm -hmm. The new covenant has replaced the old covenant. Mm. It is not just a replacement because it is old. The old covenant is a shadow of the new covenant mm. or a pointer wow. to the new covenant. Once the new covenant came, the pointer's work finished. The pointer cannot still be pointing when the object it is pointing to has arrived. <laughs> You understand? Yeah. So, follow carefully. Second Corinthians three three. Read for us. For as much as you are manifestly declared, declared to be this epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the Living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Notice that he says that the old covenant was written in stones. The new covenant was written in the fleshly tables of the heart. Mm. Of the heart, mm. the new covenant in the tables of the heart, the new covenant, which is the finished work of Christ, mm -hmm. which is the blood of sprinkling mm. in the tables of the heart. Mm. What are you saying? Yeah, yeah. The new covenant, which is the finished mm -hmm. work, which is the sprinkling of the blood in the tables of mm -hmm. the heart. So the new covenant is written in our hearts with the spirit. Of the living God. Mm -hmm. Heaven and earth made for man. The blood was offered in heaven. Heaven here now. By implication. Is the heart of men. Where the new covenant. Was written. Was, uh, where the blood was, was sprinkled. Mm -hmm. Where you know the new covenant. Was established mm -hmm. in the heart of man. Yes. Read for us. 2 Corinthians 3, 5 and 6. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. To think anything as of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament. No, not of, not the, of letter. the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. So the new covenant is a ministration of life and a ministration of the Spirit. In Second Corinthians 3, 8, honey, read for us. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? That means mm. that the old covenant will give death. Yeah. The new covenant will, will give life. life. The new covenant will give the spirit. What came out of the old covenant is death. What comes out of the new covenant is life the or the spirit. Because uh -huh. it is the spirit that gives it life. life. Yes. So the new covenant is a covenant of life. Mm. That's why once the new covenant comes, the message of the new covenant is the message of regeneration. regeneration. Is the message of new life. Mm -hmm. Not character modification. You see it. Is the message of new, new life, life. Brand new life. Yes. If any man in Christ mm. is a new creature, a new race, a new breed, a new species of being that never existed before. So these are the things we have said today. That Jesus, when he rose from the dead, offered the blood in heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's where he sprinkled the blood, mm. where the mercy seat is, and that heaven and earth are made for man, mm. and man is made for God. So God lives in man. Man lives in heaven mm. and earth. Mm -hmm. That's what we've established. And because of the finished work of Christ, man has access, unresistable, unconditional, undeniable access to yeah, God. Yeah. So you can pray confidently at any time mm -hmm. because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You don't need formula. You don't need 10 steps. You don't need 15 keys. You don't need 55 conditions. You don't need 40 doors. All you need is an understanding of what Christ has done. And with boldness, you can fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. With boldness, you can pray at any time. Mm -hmm. With boldness, you can speak to your father at any time, under any condition. It doesn't have to be 12 o'clock every midnight because there are some churches where they tell you, you must pray every 12 o'clock. And I ask some of them, why must you pray at 12 midnight every day? 
They say because at 12 midnight, there will be a spiritual change of God. Satan changes his God <laughs> at 12 midnight. What illiteracy. <laughs> what ignorance. And you see educated people mm -hmm. wallowing under the mire of that illiteracy. Mm -hmm. So every 12 midnight, you have an alarm to wake you up. Mm -hmm. Because Satan is about to change God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and who told you Satan operates change at 12 midnight? Oh, at midnight? Satan is a spirit. Mm -hmm. He does not recognize your time clock. Oh, yeah. But ignorance, that ignorance punishes and you know, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Yeah. And that kind of ignorance keeps you in bondage. Yeah. So any 12 midnight, you don't pray and clap your hand and shake your head. You don't believe that you have communicated. Mm. You are in victory. Wow. But if God has to wait for you to pray and clap your yes. hands, if God has to wait for you to pray and clap your hands before you are in victory, you will suffer major defeat in life. <laughs> What Christ did is a guarantee for victory. Hallelujah. Understanding that makes it effectual. Amen. Acknowledging what Christ did in his death, burial, and resurrection brings you to a place where you function maximally in the victory that Christ has provided. Hallelujah. So remember again, the new covenant is a covenant of the spirit. It's a covenant of life. Right inside you now, that life is alive. The life of God. And Romans tells us, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in your mortal body, he shall quicken, okay. rejuvenate, bring to life your mortal body. What you have today is the life of God. Where life is, death can function. Where life is, Satan can function. You are a custodian of God's very life, eternal life. What makes God God lives on your inside. Mm. And today as you go through the day, Hallelujah. go with that consciousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What makes God God lives on my inside. Mm. I reign in life by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So your confession today is the life of God resides in me. Mm. I house God. Mm. I am God's dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Heaven and earth is made for me. Mm. But I am made for God. Mm -hmm. And as you walk through the day, he lives in you. Amen. He's alive in you. Let's pray together. Father, we pray for viewers around the world. Mm -hmm. We take authority over every illusion, every fear, every hold of ignorance, and every hold of captivity, chains of darkness. We break and destroy the holes of religion and bondage. We come against every demonic and satanic manipulation around you. We free you to enjoy the rest that you have in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your going out is blessed. The reality of Christ overshadows and overwhelms your thoughts today. The finished work of Christ today abounds with you today. And we decree your going out is blessed, your coming in is blessed. You enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. It is well with you. Amen. You are blessed beyond every limit and every cause. Great grace is upon you today. Favor is at work for you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're excited that every day we're able to spend the first moments of your day with you looking into the perfect law of liberty, the word of his grace. I want to encourage you to order for this devotional, the Christocentric meal is a must-have for you, even if you are a minister of the gospel. In fact, if you are a minister of the gospel, the more reason why you should have this. This is very critical in equipping and helping you do the work of the ministry. And we'll be glad to hear from you today. The announcer will tell you how to order for this material and other materials of this ministry that have been written and released to equip you to do the work of the ministry as a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We love you and we're excited about this. Share with somebody. And just before we go, only one last word for our viewers. Don't forget, if anything threatens your peace, remember, it came with the old covenant. The old covenant produced death. So do not entertain it. Chase it away and operate in the new. Amen. And the old covenant has been done away with. Mm -hmm. It's been abolished mm -hmm. and it's been taken out of the way because of what Christ has done. So you are a recipient of all the benefits of the new covenant. Walk in that reality today. And until we see you again tomorrow, same time, same platform, this is Rachel and Abel Damina saying that the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of God, God is in power. Amen. Isaiah 61 from verse 1. Read for me, girl. It's a long reading. Let's go. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yes. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings. This is a mission statement of Jesus in prophecy. And remember, Jesus... 
did everything and operated according as it was written. So this was a prophecy. All right, read on that prophecy. Good tidings unto the meek. Yes. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Yes. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Yes. So liberty to the captives is a proclamation. It's not a prayer. You don't pray deliverance prayer. Deliverance is a preaching. Because deliverance is preached. So that man will believe and be saved. Salvation is deliverance. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about this. People don't read their Bibles. Honey, you know, they don't read their Bibles. I was just walking down this, the, the, the corridor in the house just on the way to the car. Then the Holy Ghost called my attention to this. All these deliverance ministers and ministries that claim they are doing deliverance, which scripture says that man is the deliverer? No scripture beginning from the shadows to the substance ever attributed deliverance to man. No man can deliver another man. I'll show you. Put your finger in Isaiah 61. Flip to Exodus 6.6. 6. Let's see the shadow concerning deliverance. Exodus 6.6. 6. We are for, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out. I, I the Lord, will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Which is sin. Which is a type of sin. I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. Next one. And I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and you shall know that I am the Lord your God which bringeth you out out salvation out of darkness out that's a shadow go ahead out from under the burdens of the egyptians next verse and i will bring you in unto deliverance movement from out into out of darkness into light who is the deliverer god now come with me to the fulfillment Colossians 1 12 Colossians 1 12 giving thanks unto who the father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints where in light this father it is he who hath delivered who is the deliverer the father the father. Somebody said, but it was Moses that went and told Pharaoh, let my people go. It is a man of God that goes to tell people, your sins have been paid for. When they believe that message, Jesus delivers. I'm teaching here. But when it came to casting devils out, he said, this sign shall follow you that believe. In my name, you shall cast out. But for deliverance, he is the deliverer. But for casting demons out, it is one of the, ID, one of the, 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 the elements in the ID card of a believer. Yes, that as you're walking as a believer, part of your ID card is anywhere demons are making noise, out. 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 But when it comes to deliverance, giving thanks to the father who had delivered us isaiah 61 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor yes he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted yes to preach deliverance to, to do the what captives. what do we do to the captives we preach we don't pray deliverance is not a prayer Deliverance is not a service. Deliverance 
is not a fasting. Deliverance is not a ministry. There is nothing like the ministry of deliverance. There is nothing like the ministry of the... It is nowhere in the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. There is no such ministry. Deliverance is the father's responsibility. In the ministries that Jesus gave to the church, there's nothing like deliverance. What ministries did he give to the church? Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the... There's nothing like the ministry of deliverance. It is human contribution to the work of salvation. Which is an insult on the finished work of grace. Hello. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs, and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. Starting the new year with this book is your first step to guaranteeing an enriched life and new year.